All right, thanks for staying with us now. Life goes beyond shelter um, for food and, and also clothes, but security and safety is also very essential. So ensuring safety has always been of utmost importance in all ages and during all situations. One cannot deny the importance of safety because it helps people avoid danger and other life-threatening situation. On the other hand, safety can also allow people to take a certain level of risk in certain situations. Now, safety accounts for, a live, uh, for living a healthy life um, safely. The term safety refers to precautions taken by people with the aim to prevent accidents, dangers, harm, damage, and loss. Safety also plays a key role in improving conditions in any atmosphere. Some argue that the unfortunate demise of Whitney, the 12-year-old Chrisland school student that happened uh, in February was uh, fate, while others argue that it could have been avoided if safety was prioritized by all parties involved. So today we're discussing the business of safety in schools, and that's the question, you know, or rather that's what we need to discuss around. So um, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 a 384 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. All right, so... Um, This conversation, I, I really don't know, because I remember that when the issue of the Chrisland School, um, the young girl with me, when it happened, I kept on saying, where were these people? Because um, in my head, I have been to that particular stadium, because we've had several inter-house sports from my own children's school when they were in primary school, because it's one of the, you know, it's, it's quite, you know, decent for a small school to, to have their inter-house sports. Right. I kept on wondering, first of all, what happened and, you know, where were the people and all of that? And again, if you had listened to the um, re listened to the, the recount of the mother when she was explaining how, you know, it was almost the like time between the lag, even there was just her everything, was you know, even getting the child. They eventually did not even get the child to the hospital and all that. I, I knew there was a very huge and um, what's it called? Um, huge evidence that negligence was heavily present in that. Um, but now the corona inquest has come out to say that really she was um, electrocuted and all of that. And of course, if um, the government has charged um, Chris Land again, um, or for manslaughter. All right, so let me hear your thoughts first of all. What do you think? I think they, they could have... Sorry, go ahead, quickly. I think they could have done better considering um, previous events that have happened in the same school. I think they should take more precautions because um, I think if you have a school and you're losing students, it's not that students are getting injured on case, like cases upon cases. It's not good for your reputation. The other students in the school are also going to be scarred by some of these things you know, people would want to withdraw. So as, as an institution, you have to understand that you're taking charge of young lives, you know, and children can be very mischievous, you understand? So you need to have your eyes oh, on no. them. If Absolutely. not, you keep having certain things like this happen. Mm. And the loss of a student, the loss of a life is mm. nothing to be played with at all. At all. Um, so um, Uti... Manslaughter, reckless and negligent act, you know, that's what the Lagos State government has charged Chris Land School. And they said if they are found guilty, um, they would, um, of the offenses, um, if found guilty, the offenses carry a penalty of life imprisonment and two year jail terms, respect, uh, um, respectively, those two crimes. What are your thoughts on this? Um, well, this. Controversy is the best way to define this, first and foremost. It's sad that a life was lost, um, and even sadder still that it's a child. <clears throat> so a, a complete future has been snuffed out. But when we come to the story, I think that the recurring thing that we have seen, um, Chris, this incident is not the first. It is one of many that we have seen with several schools um, in Lagos that have resulted in the traumatic death of children. And for me, the first thing that stands out is the story becomes almost a he said, she said. 
the school is claiming one thing happened, the evidence shows and something else happens. Um, that, for me, first, is one thing that must stop. When parents send their children to school, there is a measure of trust that has been placed in that organization as being suitable not just to educate the child, but to but keep, to keep the, the child, child safe for the yeah. period of time when the child is in their custody. So the fact that these are the institutions that are educating our children that cannot display a level of integrity that we would expect from the same children that they're supposed to be educating, forget even adults, right? It's very, very sad and disappointing in the first place. The second thing is, you would think that the schools have learned by now that you're able to come out and give a story that makes sense. How do we get from slumped and died to asphyxi asphyx um, electrocution and asphyxiation? Like, how do we get there, right? How is it possible that a child, so I don't know, I haven't read anything to the effect that it's been established how the child was electrocuted. If you've ever seen someone be electrocuted, it's not something that somebody misses, right? Um, if you come into contact with live, with the live wire and electricity, you can't miss it. And to then just simply say that the child slumped and died, I have a problem with that. Hmm. Now, you mentioned knowing the venue that the event, the, the, the sporting event was happening at. Again, the question that raises for me is, should schools, because schools should have their own sporting facilities on site. That should mm. be the case. Mm. When facilities are properly built for purpose, then they're supposed to have those um, facilities on site. But let's even say that, okay, we don't have these facilities on site. What checks are put in place and what measures, what is the minimum standard for a facility that you are sending, um, mm. you're using for a purpose like this? What are the checks? Who signs off on who can use it? Can I simply say, oh, there's an open field, so I want to go and use it? Are there standards in place that says this is what we can do? So if you sort of, for me, as I run through the whole incident, there's so many questions and very little answers. Absolutely. Um, I don't know when you were talking about the court case. Have they actually identified people? Because if you, if you charge the whole school to manslaughter, what happens if you find the school guilty? Mm. Is it the entire um, teachers and student faculty that goes to prison? Mm. So okay. has somebody been held responsible? So even on that side, it still sounds like there are gaps because I don't believe you can charge. Uh, that's the whole point of having a corporate body is to well, protect. That's why we have a, a lawyer uh -huh. and a child safety person, you know, in, because that question really is, it's actually, you know, what next? What happens, right? So Taiwa Kilami is a social development lawyer, co-founder, power parenting company, um, parents rights to social protection advocate and publisher. Akilami is arguably Africa's foremost child protection thinker and practitioner. His unique philosophy and techniques on family strengthening, child protection and related matters have been well received in over 133 countries. Akilami is also a prolific writer, poet, and a blogger, and he's joined in live from the U.S. Thank you so much, Taiwa Akilami, for joining the conversation. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be with you today. I mean, it's I so in keenly, <laughs> I've keenly <laughs> listened to the contributions from all of you. Yeah, because again, I'm so happy that we are still with I you on this matter. You know, we're happy to be with you on this matter because, again, remember when we talked about it, we kept on saying that we'll keep following the conversation, you know, and we're happy that you are, you are here, you know, to, to, to fill us in on what is happening. Uti raised some questions, right? Because, again, four people, how did they come at that four people? How did they identify the four people that they are charging with manslaughter? You know, uh, and, you know, generally, you know, what's your general assessment on the, you know, because at first we had accused Lagos State government was because, because this was political season. That was why they took up the case seriously. But you see that they are following it through. So what's your general assessment on this case of the death of Whitney? I did it wrong. Well, um, uh, um, my first, <clears throat> my first thinking is that up to today, the matter is still as politicized as everything. Hmm. And when you deal with politicization, what happens is that you, you cover up the issues. The issues are not addressed. 
Once the issues are not addressed, we cannot vouch that what has happened to Whitney will not happen to another child. Because, you see, there are fundamental ways to look at this thing. I've been in the middle of this thing. I've reviewed every file before the table. Uh, please let me quickly <clears throat> give, uh, uh, correct some impression. Uh, as of today, the Lagos State Government released a document that says that the child died of um, electrocution. According to, <clears throat> according to um, the corona inquest, report. Mm. no, no, not corona inquest, autopsy report. Oh, okay. Now, the autopsy report is a document that is supposed to go before the corona inquest. Now, the corona inquest has just started sitting, they've only had one sitting, which was on March 6. That's the only time they have sat. If you look at the corona inquest, vis a vis or Romani's case, Romani's case, corona inquest started sitting in January 2021. They just finished taking evidence on March 6, the same day that um, witness corona inquest started. And on that day, they now made an order to proceed to the venue where uh, that abuse happened. Now that is, the corona inquest in Romani's case is proceeding to the venue of the supposed crime two years after the, the crime has happened. That's, that is what is happening in that case. Put that on what leg. So what is happening right now is that the corona inquest is sitting. It has just started sitting. I think this case has been has been messed up, lumped up. Now, to the general public, it makes sense what is going on. But to some of us who know that these now things are done, we are worried. And this is why I'm worried. Now, in the first instance, for you to prevent, to prevent death in school, there must be regulations. Hmm. The question to ask is that what are the regulations of government, whether in Lagos State or at the federal level, for starting a school, putting a school in place? What are the things you must not do without? That if you don't have those things, you can't set up a school. There's nowhere to be found. There's nowhere to be found. You'll find something that looks like it. What are the safety requirements of starting a school in Nigeria? I'm saying this on the national TV. People have it to come and show us and how it is being implemented. Schools do, most schools do what they deem fit. Where do you have it in the world that for you to run an organization where you are going to be receiving children, it is subject to the whims and caprices of the people running the school. It is not done anywhere. You can't run a, an air, 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 uh, airline business and you say, safety is according to how I see it. I, I, I service my airline once in a year. It's how I see it. That's number one problem. Number two, if for whatever reason a child dies in a school, which we don't pray for, what is the protocol of intervention at the level of regulatory bodies? Government is a regulatory body. What is the protocol of intervention? I tell you today, both at the state level and the federal level, nobody can show us the protocol of intervention. The, the normal thing we do to play to the guy is to shut down the school, which is not the way forward. It's not the solution. Number three, now we have a case where a corona inquiry was, was set up. Now, you see, that autopsy report that was released was not supposed to be released to the public was a document before the corona inquest. Because the reason why I'm saying all of this is that when things are not properly done, a process is tampered with. It cannot deliver anything good. And you see, because the judge who is going to sit in that corona inquest is a human being. He goes to the market. He hears news. He hears everything. Now, that corona, uh, that autopsy report was supposed to be a document before the corona inquest. When that document goes before the corona inquest, the one who made the autopsy report, the one who, who, who wrote it, who did the examination, will be in the witness box. It will be examined by the lawyers for by the lawyers uh, uh, by the by the lawyers uh, by the lawyers of the government. They were they were examining for him to establish the authenticity of that particular document. The lawyers of Chrisland will cross-examine him. If for whatever reason the judge feels that there's a problem with that autopsy, the judge will reorder it. I've seen cases where corona inquest has been reordered. Uh, sorry, where autopsy report has been reordered because the court did not have confidence in the autopsy report. 
But what did the Lagos State government do? Because it was it was close to election. So what they did was to release that document. Now I'm not castigating the Lagos State government. Uh, maybe maybe they don't even know better. I don't know. Now so they released that autopsy report. That autopsy report was not conclusive. It was a document that says that this child died of electrocution. You know the purpose of inquest, corona inquest, is to establish the cause and circumstances of death. Now, autopsy report speaks to one thing. Likely cause of death, electrocution, according to the autopsy report. That in itself is supposed to go before the coroner inquiry for interrogation. But it was released to the public and it became is something in the news. So that's one leg. Number two leg is the issue of uh, this charge to court or no charge to court. Yes, the government in its wisdom and, and it is commendable, the DPP in their wisdom, they have said um, um, four persons, not Christian school, four persons representing the institution. Apart from the vendor, you know, vendor made it the four person. There are three people that have been charged. The principal, you know, principal is the is the is the head of the school that was having entire sport. So uh, she, she's be, she's been charged, and two other people. And the vendor who had the vending machine, that is the the machine that allegedly caused the electrocution. Four of them have been charged for gross negligence, involuntary manslaughter, and all of that. Now, they are before the court. Please note, a charge does not signify guilt. Everybody charged to court is innocent until proven guilty. That's why they still need to go to court and establish all of that. So I'm still at where I am when I came to this program the other time. It is the fact that it is too early in the day to make some conclusions. Because at the end of the day, one thing we need to know, uh, I need to, my concern today is that the way this matter has been handled, Press win-win. Parents of the child or, or everybody observing may be happy. And it is comment, it is understandable. And the parents are seeing that some moves have been made. But the way it has been politicized has affected the process. Once the process is affected, what is going to come out of it is dicey. And what is going to happen is that everybody is going to go to bed. We wait for another child to die. Let me quickly say this to you, uh, gen uh, ladies. Every society must learn from what has happened. This traffic light you are looking at today, traffic light, that invention is as a result of a problem that happened. Mm. And somebody felt people cannot die in an accident like this. Let's create traffic light to begin to guide the way people do Absolutely. things. Now, what you call today in, mm. in a state in the US, a, a bus, a school bus dropped children and a car came and rammed into them and killed one or two of them. From that day, the school, the government made laws that as from today, in that particular state, if you see any school bus parked, no car was moved. Mm. In a particular state, armed robbers attacked a particular bank. They attacked the bank and they were they, they killed people. And in that at that time, the law in that state is that no police officer must carry assault rifle. On the basis of that incident that took the life, no, nobody died in that incident, but police fought to the end. And they amended their law to say that now police can carry assault rifle now that they see what is going on. Finally, you see laws being named after people in developed country. Is it a, if we investigate this matter very well? It's not a bad idea we have a law named after Sylvester or Romani law on safety of school. Whitney Adeniron law on safety of school. But you see, the way the things have been politicized, the misinformation that has been spread in the public mm. is causing a lot of trouble. And I bet you that at the end of the day, we may not get to the root of this matter because once um, uh, the politics has gone down, swelling in has taken place, and you see uh, uh, the court or Romani, they are still in court for two years. The matter has not ended. Mm. This matter also is going to be in court. Now, some people may go to a jail. It's a possibility. Some people even may be set free. But the question is, three questions I want to leave you with. Number one, what is the procedure for starting a school? What are the safety measures the safe, safety that templates. you cannot start a school without? Mm -hmm. Where are they? Number one. Number two, if for whatever reason an accident happens, a child dies, as mm -hmm. we have in this case, what is the procedure for response? Mm -hmm. Clearly stated. Which website can we find it? 
in the federal at the federal level which website can we find it at the state level or is it at the local government level where can we find it number three what is the procedure for reporting matters like this you know because again if we have a minister of information in lagos state and strategy and we have minister of information at the federal level when matters like this happen it, or, or we have a, a, a NOAA, national mobilization a national orientation agency how do we? How does the? How is the press guided? What's the proper to protocol this matter in to a way report the situation? That we don't spin misinformation. Absolutely. Those are the three fundamental issues. Okay, you know what, um, Taiwo? Let's quickly go on a very short break. When we come back from the break, I'm sure Uti and Mary have questions. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, so if you just tuned in, we're discussing the business of um, safety in schools with Taiwa Kilami. And remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at WayshowAfrica1 mm -hmm. with the hashtag Wayshow. Uti, I want to come to you because Taiwo really raised some very strong points around templates, around protocols of intervention, around reporting procedure. And you remember, I mean, I know that when schools, when you're driving around school, um, school where there are schools, yes. in uh, school areas in, in the U.S., you, you must, you know, you see that you wait, then they finish. Once the bus, that their flap comes out that says stop, everybody stops, you know, and you must, there's a, there's a speed limit, there's a lot of things that have been put in place, you know. Um, Uti, you, 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 you want to come in? Yeah, I mean... Uh, our guest has raised some fantastic um, points so far. Uh, like I was trying to say uh, in the initial, my initial contribution, these cases continue to raise a lot of questions. And I, I would like to understand more from our guest when he talked about the fact that it's been two years. You know, when something doesn't directly impact you, it's easy to lose track of time. When I hear that it's been two years... I'm actually quite shocked that that much time has gone past. And I want to understand why it's taking so long. Mm. Because this is a consistent, every time we talk about whether it's um, gender-based violence, rape, assault, the consistent thread feedback that we keep getting is that it takes too long. Families give up along the way. Justice is circumvented. Nothing really happens. And I think that's what our guest means when he was saying, that the media will be pleased because they make all the noise and razzmatazz, and then we all move on. Do you remember how much um, Sylvester's story was in the news? And here we are now, and we're hearing that this is how long it's been. So I'd just like our guests to speak on what takes so long Why? Yes. Um, to, to actually get into this process, because surely the judiciary can be much more efficient. How are you know, I, think, I, I think that the, the problem is deeper than that. Uh, societies invest in what matters to them. Hmm. I don't think children really matter. You know, in Nigeria, in Africa, to a very large extent, you know, the nations of the future focus, focus on children. Nations of the future, they, they know that their children is all that they have. If you're going to think about a tomorrow, you cannot dream a tomorrow or drop a tomorrow without children. Because it, the way to end this world today is to arbitrate the whole idea of having children. When we stop having children, people will start dying of nobody to bury them. And this world will become extinct. So as long as we are looking for a better future, how do what we invest in that future? Is there anything too much to invest in the safety of our children? You are talking about Whitney uh, at Daniel because she made it to the news. She died in the, in the eyebrow school. What about how many other children who die uh, j just today, 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 uh, 31st of March? Thugs went into a school in a battle. They beat children, beat them up mercilessly, beat teachers, headsmen. Just today in Lagos, in 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 in, in Sele, court, children court, secondary school court, clashed macheted, you know, people were injured and all of that just today, 31st of March. So the question is, because those ones, the people in Ibadan, they're in a public school. They don't make it to the mainstream. It's not newsworthy. Christmas is a big fish, so it makes news. Uh, uh, it's a highbrow school. What about uh, uh, other other places where children have died, you know, that never made the news, Never we never heard about it. So, the, the, you see, 
Whitney is a metaphor. It's a clear indication that we need to understand how does safety work. So, Oromoni's case, for example, um, we 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 are this matter that I, I let you know that we are beat in court every time the court has sat in Oromoni's case. They first started sitting in Ekbe before they went to uh, before they went to Ikeja. And one of the issues we are facing in Oromoni's case is the judge magistrate finding where to sit. You know, we were on that for a while. You know, the court in which the judge wanted to sit is being used by another person. So the judge needed to wait and all of that. After all of those bureaucratic bottlenecks and all of that, the court came to a point now. So let me ask you a question. You, if you are not a lawyer, you watch American films. Have you ever seen when a crime happens or when they cordon off the place, that also the cordon off the place so that so that nobody will tamper with the with the setting of the place? It does it not, is it not <laughs> curious to you that the corona inquest is just going to visit? The site where this boy was allegedly bullied two years after hmm. they took that decision on the on the sixth of March. Hmm. That's why they are going to go after everybody has resumed. The place has been repainted. Everything has happened. Maybe they have even rearranged the place. That's why you want to go and do the corona inquest. It's not calling senior advocates. So what are you what are you inquesting? I don't even know what these people think we are. You know, Kai Sino Advocate of Nigeria, Kai Boy, you know, go to a cry a scene. Now, Agege Stadium now, where Whitney allegedly yeah. was allegedly, allegedly electrocuted, is the place cordoned off? Have they asked Have they Stadium not even had admit? events after the that time? The processes and procedure through which they admit people into that place, have they done that? See, let me tell you something. Nigeria, when it comes to children, is a huge suit of jokes, circus. We are just deceiving ourselves. And the truth of the matter is that if the life of this child really matters, this is not how to handle it. You aggregate stadium is there. Now, in all of this conversation we are having, I call somebody in government. I say, excuse me, what is happening to aggregate stadium? See, because the place now aggregate stadium hosts other children. It's not only Chris Land they host. What do you have as Ministry of Youth and Ministry of Youth and Social Development is in charge of stadium in because it's charge of sports. Now that ministry now, what is the what is the when they know as 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 officers of government, as line ministry, as regulatory body, that children do go there for inter sport, what measures do they put in place to ensure that the place is safe for children? And is and Taiwo. I was going to ask that why are they not on this list of the people that are being charged for manslaughter? Because that again, they also have a responsibility. They were that supposed to Nigeria. ensure that whoever it is and that they have approved to come into the facility, to use the facility, brought in things, you know, that were safe for children, yeah. knowing that it was a children's they event. Themselves. So why are they not they on themselves. that list? They themselves, they were going to receive children. In law, there's something called occupier's liability. When you admit people into your property, you have you you have received an automatic liability to ensure that they are protected. Now, so and the idea of holding in transport in that in that stadium is not new, it's not fresh. How come? How come there is no conversation going on as to what is going to happen? Now, when people go to in court now, today you have Chris Land in court. You have Lagos State government in court in, in Corona inquest in the Corona inquest. Um, which who, who do you have in court? You have Chris Land in court in the Corona inquest. You have um, Lagos State government in court. Who is trying to establish the case of the Lagos State government? You have the parents of Whitney in court who are observing the the proceedings to make sure that justice is done. Then you have the you have the vendor in court. There is no aggregate stadium in court. I didn't tell you it's not in the issue. Meanwhile, this thing that we are talking about happened on the soil of Agege Stadium. So who dropped the ball? Who neglected that critical part of the conversation or, or stakeholders? So, and you want to tell me that this process is going to bring out anything? Children are still going to go back to that place to go and have, 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 uh, have entire sport when this one is not going to teach us anything to say, okay, this is uh, the conditions are which we can have entire sport. 
these are the conditions under which your school can exist. These are the things you need to put in place. Is there no, shouldn't we as of today be thinking about a Whitney and Daniel's law? Shouldn't we as of today be thinking about a Sylvester Romani's law that is going to crystallize all the issues that were wrong, that were found hmm. in, 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 in Sylvester Romani's case? And that's going to crystallize all the issues that are wrong that were found in in uh, Daniel and Whitney's case, and and we say okay, we say okay, these are the lessons that we have learned, and these are we have assured that children are going to die again. Let me announce to you, and this is a very sad announcement. With the way we handle matters in Nigeria, we cannot guarantee the safety of our children, except for organizations who take it upon themselves to do the needful. Who take it upon themselves for conscience sake, who take it upon themselves for 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 probity sake, who take it upon themselves for the love of children. Let me quickly say to you that when a law is made, people you see people don't respect the law. You don't put a law in place and hope that people will respect it and hope on the goodwill of the people. You put the law in place and you put sanction. Now the question is when you when you when you say there are institutions that are supposed to accommodate children, parents take their children there. Is it not sad that there are no protocols? Is it not sad that there are no clear way by which you can judge whether a school has done the right thing or it has not done the right thing? Except schools that decide to do the needful, that decide to do the right thing. So that is the issue we are dealing with. Until we overcome that issue, until we come to such a place where parents are right, asking the right question. And this is the illustration for me. I don't know if I have time to make that illustration. When I was growing up, I went to public school all my life. Public school, primary school, public school, secondary school, public school, uh, uh, university. I went to Lagos State University. My school fees was 19 naira in Lagos State University. 19 naira. I read law in that, in that, in that university. Now, now, when I was growing up that we were going to public school, government was playing two roles in, 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 in schools. Government was funding school. Government was also government was funding school. So government was also running its own school. Now, as time went on, government could not cope with the whole idea of running school. So, began to have people who cannot go to school because there is no enough school. Private sector, with its ingenuity, came in and began to establish private schools. Is that not so? So, private. Public school, the debt of public school, the inability of public school to satisfy the educational yearning of the people led to the whole idea of private school, which means that the government failed in one of its responsibilities, which is to create enough school for children to go to, because Nigeria is one of the few countries where private school is an alternative to public school. You can't, you don't find it in anywhere any else. Plan. And I was going to even uh, speak to what Uti said, you know. Sorry, Taiwa Kilami, because let, we're running out of conclude. time. Let, let me just okay, conclude. go ahead. I know, let me just conclude. So, the conclusion, therefore, is that if they are failed in running school, they are still holding on to one, which is regulation. So, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. If you have failed in, in, in running your own school, that will not leave the responsibility of regulation to you. And it's because you have failed in running school. That's why we took our children to private school. The bottom line, therefore, is that regulation is in the hand of parents. Hmm. It is parents that hold schools accountable. You can't be depending on government to regulate when they have failed woefully in their in one leg of their responsibility. It is, it is, it is, it is. As a matter of fact, since you know that they are like that, that's what Jesus said to that man who said, "You are, you are a man. You want to reap when you have not sown." He said, "Since you know." Why didn't you take my money to the jury? Since we now know by registering a junior in private school, why are we still calling government to come? It, what we need to do is to now begin to become the regulatory body who we have as student school. Please, where is your child protection system? Codified into a policy, broken down into processes. Oh, we have in transport. Okay, please show me. I'm a parent. I want to see your security risk analysis. I want to see everything you have put in place to be sure that all of my children are safe. If I don't see that risk analysis, if I don't see everything you are putting in place, where is your ambulance? Who is driving it? Hello, are you driving the ambulance tomorrow? Good. Okay, when I'm sure, I release my children. If I'm not sure, son, please, your life is more important than transport. You are fine. We'll, we'll, mm. we'll take you somewhere to go and do sport where you are safe. That's how we should be doing stuff. Mm. Absolutely. 
I, I mean, it, you, it's, it's spot on because, again, when Uti was talking about purpose-built schools, the reason we don't have purpose-built schools is because, because the government failed. Most of the government schools were actually, you know, structured in a way that is purpose. They have the they big have fields, fields. They have yeah. everything. But private schools started renting three-bedroom apartments, uh, uh, four-bedroom uh, apartments to, to, to set, start schools. So, I mean, there's no way. There's a big problem. And I like what you said. We are now the regulatory bodies. We are, as parents, we need to now start to be the watchdog, the police, because we cannot wait for the, the, the government anymore. Let's take comments. Okay, I have a comment from which says, Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying, ways. The business of safety in schools. Every teacher in a school should be held responsible for whatever happens to a child. If someone had put an eye on late Whitney Adeniron, Christian schools and her parents wouldn't have lost her by now. Another thing is the negligence of teachers. If a teacher leaves home in the morning to a school, he or she must put into consideration the well-being of a child or children. It is very key. Your guest made mention of not setting up a school or establishment when facilities are not made available, which I agree. It is well with us all. My name is Daniel Iloways, regular fan. So can we wrap up in one minute, Taiwo, like 30 seconds? Well, um, these conversations are symposium it discussions. Mm. You know, it's something we need to continue to talk about. Absolutely. What I'm going to say is that, what I want to leave everyone is with that, you need to hold government accountable. But while we are trying to hold government accountable, the same way PSN is not working, you got generator. The same way vigilante is not working, you got private security. The same way you have created alternatives in different areas of our lives. The same way you need to become the regulatory body in seeing to it that schools are safe for your children. Absolutely. Thank you so much. On that note, thank you, ladies. Thank you, Uti. Thank you, Mary. I think we've, we, we are going to keep the conversation going. It's very important. I mean, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Parents need to, we need to wake up, honestly, because uh, we have to protect our children. Thank you so much, Awakilami. Now, before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us. Further drop a comment and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. Um, the safety of the people shall be the highest law. It's as simple as that. We'll see you live on Monday as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>